Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the auditorium speaker series. My name is M. Claire Knowles, and I serve as a member of the American Library Association Executive Board. But I also have a day job, and I serve as the Assistant Dean for Student Services at the Graduate School of Library and Information Science at Simmons College in Boston. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Harper Collins for their generous sponsorship of Nancy Pearl and Mary McDonough Murphy's talk today. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that this evening is the opening general session featuring Toni Morrison. It starts at 5.30. The scholarship bash will also take place this evening with buses departing from the convention center immediately following the opening general session. If you still need to purchase tickets, you can do so at the bash booth or the registration desk. I would also like to remind everyone to attend the rally on Tuesday for Library Advocacy Day, with buses departing from the convention center immediately following the closing session. Lastly, don't forget to check out the exhibits and all they have to offer. But first things first. In celebration of the 50th anniversary of To Kill a Mockingbird, an American classic, Nancy Pearl will interview Mary McDonough Murphy, Emmy award-winning filmmaker and author of the upcoming book, Scout, Atticus, and Boo, a celebration of 50 years to kill a mockingbird. Nancy Pearl is the author of Book Crush for kids and teens, recommended reading for every mood, moment, and interest, and Book Lust, recommended reading for every mood, moment, and reason, and more Book Lust, 1,000 new reading recommendations for every mood, moment, and reason. All published by Sasquatch Books. Ms. Pearl will be signing her books tomorrow at 2 p.m. at Publishers Group West, number 2740. In 2004, Ms. Pearl was awarded the Women's National Book Association Award given to a living American woman who has done meritorious work in the world of books beyond the duties or responsibilities of her profession or occupation. In 1998, Library Journal named her Fiction Reviewer of the Year. Ms. Madonna Murphy will be signing in the Harper's Collins booth 2513 at 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. following today's program. Now, please extend a warm welcome for Nancy Pearl and Mary McDonough Murphy. So nice of you all to come out this early to see and hear from Mary about her new book. So I'm just going to jump right in with the questions and we're going to see some film clips. It'll be a great, uh, a great morning. Um, so Mary, how did you come to do this book and this film about one of our all-time favorite books? And I talk, they say all-time favorite books and I say our because I was talking to um, a young woman t last night from Vanguard Press, and I knew, of course, we were doing this this morning, and I said, Amanda, do you remember when you first read uh, To Kill a Mockingbird? And she said, Mr. Elliot, seventh grade. <laughs> <laughs> I, that, <clears throat> that's one of the things that I think is so true about this book, and Oprah Winfrey, when I interviewed her, told me that she really calls this our national novel, and it's, it's just one of those novels that you can ask anyone to a person, they will tell you exactly where they were, what was happening to them, 
and what it meant when they read To Kill a Mockingbird. People can tell you what the edition felt like, what the pages were like, what the, their sister's lamp looked like when they were reading it. It just has that effect. And so what, how did you read it? <clears throat> I almost escaped high school without reading To Kill a Mockingbird because it had not been assigned. And my mother and sister, who know quite a lot about books, uh, were talking to me one morning, and somebody mentioned Jem. My sister did. And I said, well, that's, you know, that's such a funny name for a girl. And they just crawled across the table saying, we cannot believe that you have not read this book. So I read it just as I was leaving high school, and I was completely in the tank for Scout. It, utterly. Right. And did, and did you find as you went... Um, as you went on in your life and did other things that that book had become in some ways more important to you than other books perhaps? What happened to me really, um, and the whole reason I started on this documentary, is because of an adult rereading. And it made a far greater impression on me than it had when I read it as a, as a young girl. Um, I was more blown away by the novel as a 34-year-old person than, than I had been as, as an adolescent. And, mm -hmm. and it, a lot of it had to do with just the writing itself. Um, but when I, when I read it for the second time as a grown-up, I was like, did I really read this book before? Because there was so much in it that, I, that had escaped me. Right. Um, and that's when I began, like Scout, to go exploring and see what I could find out about the novel, because it was clear to me that it had had an enormous impact, both you know, culturally and socially. Um, so should we see the clip sure. about Scout? Why don't we look at a clip about Scout? Yeah. Who are the clip? I think over there. Uh, there, here, okay, it goes. here we go. When I was a kid, I collected insurrectionary, outspoken, not girly, girls in books. There was Anne of Green Gables, and there's Joe March in Little Women, and there's Scout in To Kill a Mockingbird. A scout is irresistible. She's just irresistible. I fell in love with Scout. I wanted to be Scout. I thought I was Scout. I felt so attached to her. I just wish I could have been a smart scout <laughs> and always been there with the comeback, but oh well. What do you think you're doing? I love the fact that she's a little smart ass. She speaks first with her fists and then has to <laughs> sort of back up three or four steps. She's sort of an extension of like a Huck Finn character. She's very typically an American character in that she is poking at the boundaries of, of good taste and, you know, what's proper. Hey, Mr. Bones. Don't you say hey to me, you ugly girl. You say good afternoon, Mr. Bones. She, she doesn't have a mother. In many ways, her childhood is very lonely. Um, and it's only her interest in other people that makes it a full childhood. She's really an explorer. She truly struggles in the way we struggle as adults to figure out how to be in the world. And here's Scout, you know, who believes in things, who is funny and curious and passionate and a tomboy. And I think Scout has done more for Southern womanhood than any other character in literature. Morning here, Scout. <laughs> Have your breakfast. Aunt Alexandra was fanatical on the subject of my attire. I could not possibly hope to be a lady if I wore breeches. I still don't see why I have to wear darn old dress. Aunt Alexandra's vision of my deportment involved playing with small stoves, tea sets, and wearing the adipearl necklace she gave me when I was born. Furthermore, I should be a ray of sunshine in my father's lonely life. I suggested that one could be a ray of sunshine in pants just as well, but Auntie said that one had to behave like a sunbeam. She's a scamp, and, and hysterically funny, um, and, and no less funny as an adult looking back, although in a slightly more fermented and, and, and seasoned way. 
and um, she's, she's, just, she's just great company. I think one of the reasons I became so obsessed with Harper Lee is because everything that she did convinced me that she was just a grown-up scout who hadn't gone over to the dark side of being a girly girl.